everyone so i am doing this clean check for a dentist um, this dentist has asked me to look at the patient the patient is about 20 years old early 20s and you can see the presentation it's a class one buccal occlusion or nearly class one with some crowding anteriorly so you've got just about a quarter class two canine relationship but overall it's a class one and minimal overjet or no even overjet is about two three mils and you've got almost normal overbite so obviously it's just a bit of crowding in my opinion this is a simplistic mild to moderate case we've got a bit of a midline shift here so looking at the photograph of the patient now patient is showing 100 percent upper incisal display and that is one thing we want to maintain i'll always start with what we're going to maintain we are going to maintain class one molars and we are going to maintain the position or vertical position of the upper centrals so from here on i build the rest of the things that i want to do also looking at objectives right like are we going to really fuss too much about a lower midline meeting the upper now yes if we are able to achieve that in that treatment in a reasonable time with the reasonable biological uh, risks, we probably will correct the lower midlines. So here you can see the dentist built asymmetric IPR. And obviously that's showing me that the main way of correcting the crowding, which is again mild crowding in both arches, is IPR. If we look at whether we can expand a bit, one of the best pictures I see is this one the occlusal and i actually often like to have my roots turned on which is good now in this occlusal photo i am following the walla ridge w-a-l-a will will andrews larry andrews the walla ridge and i do think there is some scope of expansion i am able to expand a bit more on quadrant one than quadrant two and so I will be doing some mild expansion of the arch as well, which is dental expansion. I do think majority of the crowding being resolved in the lower arch will have to come from IPR. In my opinion, the IPR interproximal reduction has to be more than this. It's, I don't think, and this is where we're going to see. And, you know, when something is so mild, I'm going to expand the arches. We're going to see I like the occlusion. I'm liking everything else. Okay, and I've got an OPG here as well. All right, so let's close this off. And I'm going to start tweaking this plan. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just double click here. It's a spark um, thing. So first thing I start is always with my transverse. And uh, I've got the green turned on, which is my super. Now you can see there's not a lot of expansion here. To be honest, the spark techs usually are very good. They have already expanded quadrant two. Um, just a little bit, but quadrant one premolar is a bit more. However, I think a little bit more expansion would be better for her. So we're just going to even just lift the premolar area a bit more. There is that voila ridge. Um, and also 30% of expansion doesn't happen in the first set of aligners. So you see, as soon as I expanded the arch, how much the IPR disappeared. So it, it's a great way to just play with the model and you can see the IPR and this arch hasn't disappeared but you can kind of see what's happening right you can see this incisor coming forward considerably forward actually if we look at the the three two the lower left um, lateral incisor you can see it's considerably coming forward now if i think the patient has a thin biotype i mean she doesn't have existing recession she's very young still um i just don't want lower incisors to come too forward so definitely my gut instinct that said i needed more ipi yes i do need more ipi here because that will reduce the amount of labial movement of this incisor. The rest of the incisors are okay. I think this one, if anything, is coming in, the 4-1. And again, the 4-2. Now you see the amount of movements in 3-2-4-2, which is your lower left lateral incisors, both sides. There's a lot of rotation there. And rotation just has an accuracy of 40-50%. So if we don't, A, we don't even have attachments on them. They need attachments. And the next thing is we're going to actually make sure we have plenty of aligners. So if 
if spark has given me 31 first thing i'm going to do is change the velocity of my liners i actually want um Oh, so because I changed the tooth position, it's not allowing. Otherwise, you could change here, okay? So if I go undo, so one, one trick is change your velocity first, then change everything else. So I'm going to go undo, undo. And as I go undo, let's see if we can change velocity now. Yeah, it'll allow me now. So the first thing I do, I think something like this, ideally, I'd like 40 upper lower active aligners and minimum minimum in my first set okay so let's not get any oh sink arches yeah well we don't need c chain here so we're going to apply and you're going to see you've got your template of velocity set up now so i've got my velocity of tooth movement set up why i chose 40 well it's experience and a little bit of knowing you know how inaccurate aligners are on on average the inaccuracies of the clean check versus the movement that happens biologically is about 30 to 40 percent so uh, you know and, and then you've got to think of a realistic balance too so i just think that's good so now that i've done that i'm going to start with my modifications and the first modification i'm going to do is my transverse dimension like i did before so i kind of just undid what i'd done before so we are just doing exactly just a bit more and i think she can handle that right like look in fact the sevens are coming in so i might even just yeah i think this is good and you see the amount of ipr literally gone like she doesn't even need ipr here so uh, and maybe maybe we could just limit that ex expansion a little bit yeah i think this is nice i'm happy with this so obviously the lower has adjusted to the upper now i have a concern about and i do want ipr here so you see as i do the ipr which is interproximal reduction you're seeing less forward movement now i am not so concerned about a midline in an adult and a slight midline shift due to tooth size discrepancy not really concerned about that now as you see i'm just correcting the uh tooth positions now i don't know why this one's intruding uh, I don't know if there's a need for it. So let's look at the vertical. The vertical was good, right? From day one, it's good. So when the vertical's good, I try to keep the vertical the same. So here, this premolar is intruding. And I don't want that because I think the vertical's good. So there is no need for us to intrude these premolars. In fact, I want it very similar to where it was, like very little vertical movement. Same thing here. We do not want any intrusion or extrusion so very similar to where pre-treatment was because we're maintaining the vertical okay and i kind of like it here now i don't know why we're intruding this canine so much either but again that's how the technicians have set up so it's our job as doctors to verify this so now that i'm seeing my overall finish set up not that bad I don't like to see the mesiopalatal cusp, by the way, of the 2-6. So I'm going to do buckle root torque here. And, um, and what that will do is ensure that I do not get any posterior open bite. Even then, you can't be 100% sure. Um, overall, I'm liking this. And I mean, if we just remove the point one, which is really unnecessary, I like it. I, I think it's a nice balanced arch. Now I'm going to go into the main things. Let's remove... Uh, let's look at the occlusion at the end. So I like to see where the occlusion was, where it's going to. So you can see there has been some heavy contacts here. So what I might do, I might just, and I think that's why they had intruded it slightly. And what I might do is just bring it back down a little bit more. I think because of the expansion, you expect a tiny bit of extrusion, okay? So I might just do this and I'm happy with that, okay? This, imagine a piece of plastic all the time on the patient's mouth, 22 hours, and what can happen, you can get an intrusive effect. So instead, I'm building tiny bit of extrusion here to counter that. Okay, so now I'm going to be putting my attachments. This is the last thing I do. You know, a lot of people just start from the attachments. This is the last thing I do. Um, and I just look at that. I hate beveled. Um, now you may disagree. I know orthodontists who love beveled and that's fine. I just absolutely hate them. 
I find whenever, because I use virtual tracking, dental monitoring, I keep a very close eye on how my patients um, are going. And I can see whenever I use bevel attachments, I get more unseats than I do when I use conventional. And I'm a big fan of conventional attachments. In Spark, I will err more towards the side of adding an attachment than not. I find that the Spark True Gen is, is a fantastic material, absolutely fantastic. However, it is quite um, flimsy material. It's uh, By flimsy, I mean flexible. I find it's just got that tiny bit of flexibility. Now, I think this is over extruded. As you can see, you never have laterals down to this level. So um let's see yeah even this is over extruded so i'm just getting my incisal planes right now and um so i'm you, you guys are getting a bit of a commentary of everything now i don't think these should be intruded because they were at a good position i like it like that yeah laterals almost always every case i will be putting attachments on usually a horizontal close to incisal third and um, you know, on anterior teeth, I'll also err uh, towards closer to the incisal third. Now, let's see the movement build. So there's a lot of extrusion on that canine. And what I really want to do is actually use an appropriate attachment for it. So I've got a slightly wider one close to incisal third. Now, what's happening here too? A bit of extrusion. All right. So again, we're going to use the appropriate attachment for extrusion. And I've put a slightly bigger one right i do like attachments on my all my terminal molars right i do like that let's have a look now these premolars now i would err on the side of more attachments than less in spark as i've said in invisalign i would have done less attachments invisalign just has this um less flexible i would say now i could be wrong but i think the material is just got less flexibility however the spark trujan having more flexibility it's a beautiful material for initial alignment derotation in fact i do all my movements with spark trujan i don't like the trujan xr so i try my best to avoid that and not have that at all and um yeah so i'm just starting to see it's coming together nicely we still have an overjet perhaps we don't need this much ipr okay so i'm going to reduce in proximal reduction you see what's happening as i reduce it we're getting a nicer overjet now she always did have a slightly increase overjet so i think i'm not worried about that i would like to add a little bit more ipr here just a tiny bit because canines do have more enamel and they're quite a curvy um, contact so i prefer sometimes to take off more of the canine however these um, teeth look quite good to me in terms of you know the width of uh, them now look look at the amount of rotations on those canines and lower laterals so obviously for rotation i would prefer a vertical attachment and here i'm going to go with the four mil like a nice long one and it just gives us enough leverage to to just push against it and i think i might even put it more mesial same thing here and this is just the first set guys so although i'm trying to get very close to a reasonable result the first set often means you know that we're just getting alignment symmetry um, the basic plan set up in all three dimensions and then obviously a refinement is almost always needed i can't think of a case where i haven't done a refinement in, in my last thousand cases so almost always needed and i i i don't mind a refinement in fact that means i mean how can you finish a, a patient with one arch uh, with one one arch wire so i still think there's you know let's look at it from every angle you see the laterals here they still just don't look right they need more rotation you see more rotation you want to follow the arch form it's quite a lot of rotation on them i'd even um put maybe 50, 45 aligners here but i mean and you see the amount of uprighting here now if i put a lot of verticals there it's a problem for a line of fit sometimes so i'll um i'll actually do sometimes a combination of horizontal attachments 
if I'm if I have to put them in all four incisors you know a combination of vertical and horizontal we'll still get some sort of retentive element from any attachment and I kind of like that and I think yeah I like that more now I don't really worry about these orange things they're just telling us it's a collision one another thing I will do in an adult if you really don't want need to move the sevens too much which is what's happening in this case I won't move the sevens I'll make them unmovable uh, the worst thing we can do is sometimes move a terminal molar and it stuffs up the entire occlusion and we don't really the movement built on these sevens was minimal so by not moving them I'm just guaranteeing that I may, don't make a mistake and over extrude and just change my occlusion I really like this now so let's see where it was where it is where it was where it is I like it I think I think it's quite nice I might just add a little bit more root torque here on those centrals I think now again the accuracy of this movement is about 50% maybe even 40 so I'm just adding some and and we'll see where we get to and this is why we may need a refinement right now I'm also looking at my incisal edges she does have unusually long centrals compared to her laterals so we'll always have a slight step here and I'm happy with that but I might just reduce the step slightly I think patients don't understand sometimes that our laterals will have a step they think everything should be flush when it comes to the two the the two types of incisors and maybe you need a little bit of reshaping at the end here so with with like a bit of a soft flex disc i think you could easily reshape the edges here at the end so a bit of restorative contouring i'll just make sure i've got some buckle torque because i've got some expansion and yeah i'm liking the torque and same thing here just want to see a bit of buckle root torque here now these roots obviously aren't true roots they're estimate estimated roots but they do help with planning uh, there's also a study done that when you turn the roots on even though they're not true roots the planning just was a bit superior to when you don't turn them on and i just think it's i'm liking the look of this my 40 aligners I think it's a reasonable biologically acceptable plan here so we've got the t1 t2 i like it i really like this actually now and here's our t1 and t2 and you can see our low incisors haven't come too forward we built the right amount of ipr and combination of arch expansion we've maintained what we can the only thing is midline correction so at t1 and t2 look it's unless we did a little bit more ip on this side i think we would struggle with um and i would actually do a little bit more this side we might be able to make the midlines coincident okay so here if you notice i just increased my ip i was still within biologic limits and we might be able to get the lower midline coinciding with the upper and, I, and again, if we don't get there, it's not the end of the world. A midline shift is not my uh, concern. And we can always tweak this plan in refinement uh, with what we need. So I like this overall plan. I'm quite happy with it. So here I would, um, I'm uploading it up to the portal, so to the cloud. And I'm simply going to ask the technician, hey, I like this plan. Just repost for my approval and no changes required. I've made my 3D changes, please accept them. Don't worry about collisions or anything like that. I've, I've checked everything. So I'm basically going to be telling the technician this. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short video on how I just tweaked a mild to moderate case in Spark. In fact, I consider this case quite mild in complexity in Spark aligners and some of my thought processes of how I planned this and how I looked at it. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot. Thank you. Bye.